welcome from the Industry of Things World Asia 2019. I'm here with Klaus Müller from Scheffler. And yeah, welcome to the conference. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to participate yeah. in this interview. Okay, My um, pleasure. Could you quickly introduce yourself and yeah, what are you doing for the company? Okay, I'm the COO of Scheffler Asia Pacific. I'm living in Singapore now for one and a half years. Uh, before that, I was seven years in Shanghai as a plant manager and operations manager. And um, I'm here also for the topic of IoT because we are facing now a time where we start to digitalize our operations, our plants. And I was talking here at a use case we have um, with a new plant in Vietnam. What are our ambitions and where we want to go with digitalization? Mm. Yeah, yeah, we already heard the keynote presentation from you. <laughs> Um, on digitalization in a low-cost country and the impact on leadership um, behavior. Can you give us some key takeaways from yeah. the session? So the first, first feedback and, and discussion that I just had also in the coffee break after the keynote was that there are a lot of similarities, not only in our, pla in our plant or our company, but also with the other companies. We are in a phase now where most of the pilots are done, where we see what's possible with, with digitalization. And the question is now how do we scale it and how we bring it into the world. And then there's um, another challenge for us, for example, where I, where I picked this low-cost uh, country example, because the needs may be different. Uh, it's not about labor costs, it's not about automation, but what kind of apply applications we can use now in a low-cost country to make it a best-cost location. And in the discussion here now with the, with the colleagues and with the peers, um, we are somehow all in the same, same time frame now to dealing with the scaling and finding the right way to implement all these ideas. Mm. Have you already mm. some success stories there to share? Uh, I think we, dis we, we are discussing with, with the peers um, solutions for artificial intelligence, for uh, cobots or robots or uh, autonomous vehicles driving in our plants. Um, but the challenge is still how to connect everything, how to bring it to the cloud and how to utilize the big data we have uh, the colleague from Rockwell um, just also mentioned it, how to scale it up now and how to utilize the big treasure we have um, to make use of this. Mm. What are some of the challenges, um, successes and achievements you faced in your digital transformation mm -hmm. journey? Um, I think one challenge is for sure the expectation from everyone. And we start with pilots on a very small, small uh, area, but the expectation is very high. Yeah? The our peers, our colleagues, the management expects fast results, uh, fast benefits, uh, return on investment should be, should be available very soon, and then the rollout globally, for example, should be there. And, but when we're doing, it, when we're doing uh, pilots, we learn a lot on the way. Uh, we try to be agile in that, and we, we learn every day something we didn't know before. So how to overcome these kind of hurdles, this will take time and we don't, uh, should forget our employees because we have to take them with us on our journey, which I uh, also mentioned in my keynote. So these are the challenges we have, to be very fast, but do the right things, uh, that we don't need to do it again in, in two or three years. Mm. And the biggest successes on your digital transformation journey? I think the biggest success would be the main understanding that this is the right way, that there are some benefits, not only threats, especially for our uh, employees, our workers, and the potential. I think everybody sees now the potential, and we have a common understanding that this is the right way. And we're getting closer as a company with all our departments to streamline our ide ideas and to streamline which direction are the first, um, where are the first priorities, what to do. So I think the overall understanding and, and the alignment is, is already a good, good success. Mm. Mm. Look into, into the future, um, which technologies do you think will impact most the future of Industry of Things? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's of course a very difficult, difficult question. Mm -hmm. I think whoever could answer that <laughs> uh, would, be, would, be a very, uh, would be very successful in the future. But I think algorithms, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, when, we, when we know how to use our data in the right way and in a fast way, that is something which, has, which will have a lot of impact, at least for us. And I also see a lot of in the production environment of virtual reality and augmented reality. Um, we can bridge distances. We can be globally available um, 24 hours. 
so I think this would also be a big big step ahead and a, a future technology for production environments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we will hear more about this in the next two coming days. Mm -hmm. um, we have various formats. You will probably heard about our yes. case studies, keynotes, interactive sessions like yeah. the wall cafes. Mm -hmm. um, how do you plan to take advantage of these these interactive sessions and our multi-touch point concept? I think um, now there will be some more presentations, some panels. Um, I'm very keen to, to listen to these case studies there. And then the World Cafes and the break times, um, I think ideally to, to network, to catch up, and to try to find um, colleagues and, and peers uh, where we can connect, uh, exchange our ideas, maybe make benchmarks, and, and share our risks and our opportunities uh, to work together in the future. Yeah. Then thank you for your time. I hope you will get a lot of insights here during the next days. And yeah, yeah. thank you very much. Looking forward to that. Thank, thank you. you.